How much schooling is really needed to get started with HVAC? This is a question that I often get in my comments section, so I thought I should finally make a video on this topic, and before getting ready for the video, I posted a poll in my community section, and I asked my HVAC audience for their input, how much schooling they thought was necessary. And to my surprise, the selection that got the most votes is that no school is necessary, learn on the job. And honestly, this is the one that I actually thought was gonna get first, so as you can see, I was way off in my predictions. So if we go with the majority opinion of the HVAC guys that are already out in the field, according to them, very little to no experience is needed to get started in the HVAC field. In my case, I have a two-year associate's degree that I got about 10 years ago. And looking back, I think the second year was completely unnecessary because throughout my whole career, I focused only on residential, whereas the second year was all about commercial type of work. The way the two years were put together in my college, the first year was primarily all residential stuff, and the second year was commercial, such as rooftop units, chillers, boilers, walk-in freezers, and other stuff like that. But this same college also offered an HVAC certificate training and an HVAC diploma training. The certificate was six months long and the diploma was one year. Looking back now, if I were to do that again, I would only either go for the six month or the one year. So unless you know for sure that you want to be in commercial, I think the second year for most people is not necessary. And even if you do plan to go into commercial work, it's really helpful to get into residential first, learn all that, and then move on to commercial. And by the time you're done learning residential, you're gonna have enough experience where you're not gonna have to go to school for anything commercial. You could just jump right in and learn on the job. Another downside of a two-year degree is that you end up having to take a lot of generals, such as math, economics, writing, philosophy, and all kinds of other stuff. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bash on general education, but is it necessary for HVAC? No, not really. Most of it is completely irrelevant to HVAC. So that's what it was like in my school, but I do understand that there's a bunch of different schools out there and they all do things differently. There's different programs, different courses. So if you could share your school story with us in the comments below, that would be amazing. If you're an HVAC guy that went through school, what program did you choose? How long did it take you? And was it worth it? Now, for those of you that are looking to get started with HVAC and are considering different schooling options, I do have five suggestions for you. Number one is, can you afford not to go to school? And I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about knowledge. Do you have any kind of prior background in electrical stuff, in mechanical stuff, in engineering? Or are you coming from a completely different field, like accounting, for example? I'm saying this from experience, because I just finished my accounting degree when I dropped it and switched over to HVAC. Personally, I knew absolutely nothing about any of the things I listed. For me, the schooling was very beneficial. I learned a lot. So if you're like me and you never did anything mechanical or electrical in the past, I would suggest one of two things. Number one, if you're very self-motivated and you can study on your own, I would suggest the YouTube University. There is a ton of free HVAC training content on YouTube that you can watch. Just spend hours and hours and hours learning the basics on YouTube. One thing you can do to make sure that you're learning the right things is to go to any college website, look up their HVAC program and see what classes they offer and then simply look up YouTube videos on those topics. Make sure you understand each topic sufficiently and you should be good to go. One thing I would recommend getting right away is a multimeter. You can start practicing with that right when you get it. I have a couple of videos on how to use multimeters for beginners. If you've never used a multimeter before, I'm sure you'll find those videos very helpful. So that was option number one. Option number two is for those of you that are not self-motivated and find it hard to study on your own. School will basically force you to study using tests and quizzes and grades and all of that. Most of us have regular jobs, so most likely you're gonna have to go to night school, which starts in the evening and ends at about 9 p.m. I do suggest going to a physical school for this. If possible, I would avoid the online schools because with an online school, there is definitely no hands-on training. And on that note, let's go to point number two, which is don't spend a lot of money on schooling. 
The poll results that I showed in the beginning of the video should give you an idea of how much you should spend on your schooling. Preferably, it should be under 10,000. If it's over 20,000, then definitely look at other options. You should be able to get through HVAC school without racking up a bunch of debt. I do understand that different states and different schools will have vastly different pricing, so I can't speak for all the different schools, but you should be able to shop around and find one that is reasonably priced. Usually, the best option is either a local technical college or a local community college that offers an HVAC program. And one more thing I would look for when you're looking at all of these different options is to see how much hands-on experience do they give. Because some of these colleges, they are literally all theory and almost no lab experience. So they teach you all the basics, you go through all the books, they have a whiteboard, but you never actually go and use the multimeter. You don't use the gauges, you don't use the compressors, you don't practice any soldering or brazing or any of that. It's all just theory. Whereas other programs are 80% hands-on and 20% theory. I think that would be much better. Number three is you will need certifications whether you go to school or not. In fact, the more of them you can get, the merrier because they do make your resume look better. But there are two certifications that you really should get. One is a must and the other is highly recommended. The first one is an EPA certification that proves that you can handle refrigerants. There's four different ones that you can get. There's a type one certification, type two, type three, and universal. If you get the universal certification, that means you passed all four sections. It's another way to say that you're certified as a type one, two, and three technician. HVAC companies love the universal certification. So if you're serious about doing HVAC as a career, I would highly suggest making the extra effort, study a little harder, but get the universal. Don't settle for just one of the types. So if you pass the test for type one and two, but fail three, you're not gonna be getting the universal. You have to pass the tests for all the sections to get that certification. And the other certification that is not mandatory, but is really good to have is the OSHA 10 hour or 30 hour safety training. If you go to an HVAC school, most of them should have the EPA certification and the OSHA training as part of the program. I got my certifications while I was in school, and in fact, I still have them in my wallet, and I sometimes do have to use the EPA one to buy refrigerant. It's just a little card that looks like this. Number four, on-the-job training is the best training. Solving problems in a lab setting is good, but real-life experience is always gonna be king. If you're able to pull it off, the best case scenario is when you're doing school and work at the same time. So during the day, you're doing your HVAC job, your very first HVAC job, and in the evening, you're doing the school. That's exactly what I did when I started, and it was great. When I went to night school after work, I actually had real life questions to ask the teacher about the different things I saw in the field. In fact, let me tell you an interesting thing. Back when I did school, which was about 10 years ago now, I had four semesters. So two semesters for the residential and two for the commercial. So after we were done with the first semester, we got our basics down and we started on our second semester, more than half of the class was already hired on their first HVAC job. Even 10 years ago, there was a high demand for new HVAC technicians. And as far as I know, now the demand is even higher. One really helpful piece of advice that our teacher gave us to get our very first HVAC job was to physically walk into the office that you want to work at. So check your area, see what all the different HVAC companies are there, and then physically go to the ones you would like to work at and ask if they're hiring. Don't just apply online. Physically go there and check them out. Most of the guys got their first job doing that physically coming to the location. And honestly, one regret that I have that I briefly mentioned in the beginning of the video is that I did that second commercial year. What I wish I would have done instead is work more hours at that first job, even offer to work overtime because I would have been learning a lot more on the job plus getting paid for it. Whereas at college, I was studying a bunch of stuff that was good but not necessary and I was paying for it. 
Just throwing that out there as one more thing to consider as you're planning your HVAC career. And actually, while I'm talking about considerations, there is one more thing to consider before I move on to the next point. The thing is, a lot of these colleges and HVAC programs, they use outdated information. The textbooks that they use, the courses that they use, a lot of them are actually pretty old. In fact, there's a chance that the professor that is teaching you hasn't been doing any kind of HVAC work for the last 15 years. So it stands to reason that up-to-date on-the-job training is better than not up-to-date school education. But anyway, let's move on to number five, which is pretty simple, and that is stay humble and be willing to learn. That is very important, especially in the beginning. Some of the senior techs out there are really grumpy old folks that know a lot. These guys can be easily triggered and it's easy to get on their bad side. If you by chance mouth off to them, have a bad attitude, come in late, or are on your phone while you're with them, those are all things that can easily piss them off. And if that happens, that can cause them to have no desire to teach you or give any care about your progress. So when you end up with senior techs, you're on a ride along and you're watching them work, listen well, be very attentive, ask questions, and take notes. That's what being humble and being willing to learn looks like. And if we have any HVAC technicians watching this video, or if you've simply been around the block and know a thing or two, we would really appreciate it if you took a minute to share your tips and life advice in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comments section below, let me tell you something interesting that happened the other day. So my son, he runs into the room and he says, Dad, I'm hungry. And I say, okay, that's interesting. Well. Nice to meet you, Hungry. I'm Dad.